In the old agreement, you serve him, but in the new agreement, he serves you. But I'm supposed to apologize. Do you know the most profound challenge with that? Adam did not have a body. And I should apologize for that. It says, let us make mankind in the image of God. In the image of God, they made him. There's one God, but he manifests himself in three forms. And I'm to apologize for that too. Who was the biggest loser? Satan? No. God. Sorry, I'm not apologizing for anything. Jesus says that there will be false prophets in the days to come and they will show signs. Peter also says that false prophets, just as there was them that rose amongst the people, there will also be false teachers that rise among us who will bring in destructive heresies, even some of them denying the master of Botham. Now, what does that mean? Well, that necessarily means, according to Jesus' words, as well as Peter's and others, that there will be false teachers, false prophets. For some reason, though, people think that we're not supposed to notice them or that they don't exist. If we notice them, we're supposed to keep quiet, keep to ourselves. In other words, they, they've uh, adopted this mantra that snitches get stitches, I guess. They don't want us to tell or to warn other people about dangers. Could you imagine there being a sexual predator out there and no one warns? Could you imagine there being some sort of terrorist danger and no one warning? Could you imagine there be some sort of serial killer or something happening out there and no one warning? Could you imagine there be some sort of uh, recall on bread or sugar or milk and no one warns you? Could you imagine there be some sort of disease, pandemic, something and no one warns you? The person with that information is the one who is not a very good person. Depending on who they are, that person might even go to jail. Well, the same thing is, is there when it comes to us as believers. We see these things, we hear these things, and people don't want us to say anything. He was foreordained. Before. What? Before. Before what? The foundation of the world. He was a predestinated thought. That's right. You can't credit Amen. the Son of God right. for nothing. That's nothing. That's right. That's right. That's right. Get it? That's right. That's right. That's oh, right. that statement just stirred the devil up. That's, good. Right. That's, right. That's right. I want to stir up your pastor. That's right. That's it. I said, so you, you cannot credit the Son of God so for nothing. That's right. That's right. He couldn't even make himself. That's right. Uh, so do we leave that out there? Do we not tell people to uh, run away from that person? Remember, the Bible tells us, Romans 16, 17, Paul makes a statement. He says, I, I urge you, brethren, to keep an eye or your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances. Notice what he says, though. Keep your eye. Keep your eye. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is in the uh, infinitive. That means this is kind of a, a process, an ongoing thing. Keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching, the doctrine, the teaching, the word of God, which you learned and turn away from them. So keep your eye on them, turn away from them, but not just you, other people. People get bothered when you point out their favorite false teacher's um, error, and they think that you're the one that you're in the wrong for uh, calling it out. And so they want you to apologize. Again, let me be clear, not apologizing for anything. Out of life. Come on the way off of her. People want other believers to believe that though they have the Holy Spirit in them, they can be still bound by a demon or have a generational curse. That is heretical um, to the highest level. Why? Because it speaks of the inefficiency, the ineffectiveness, the weakness of Jesus' death on the cross and the Holy Spirit. And there's a reason why they don't want to have a conversation. Why? Because they'll be shown that they don't know anything about the scriptures. And two, uh, their pride is in the way. And more importantly, uh, the enemy is ends up getting exposed and we don't want the devil to be exposed. No, we want him hiding. We want his um, shadowy threats to seem like they're even more. We want people to be misdiagnosed, uh, that it's, it's an issue with their flesh or their heart. No, we don't want them to know that. Instead, we want them to think that everything's okay. You just have a demon. You just have a generational curse and I can take care of that. Just let me touch you and I will set you free. Not Jesus but me. God created you and he made you. And if you believe that about your life, then when you criticize yourself, you might as well be criticizing your creator. So no, I'm not going to apologize. Listen to what the Bible tells us to do. And then the person that says that we shouldn't call them out, that we should leave them alone, let God handle them. Make that make sense in light of the scriptures. Listen to the words that are used. Peter, Paul says in Titus 1, 9, he says, holding fast the faithful words, which is in accordance with his teaching so that we will be able to both exhort in sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict someone said no Corey, don't refute them even though they contradict the scriptures 
Don't refute them. Uh, leave them alone. But he says sex before marriage is a sin, right? Mm -hmm. Show me one verse that says that. God doesn't care about your sin anymore. The biggest lie you are ever told mm -hmm. <laughs> is that if it doesn't line up with scripture, it's not from God. Mm. Another word that's used is the word expose. When someone does something wrong, when someone says something wrong, we are to expose them. Who says that? Well, Paul says that in Ephesians 5.11. Do not participate in the fruitful deeds of darkness. Some people do, going to these different conferences. He says, but instead, even expose them. So, what are we supposed to do? Expose them. And certainly don't apologize for exposing them, no matter who has a problem with it. If I'm wrong, if I've done something in error, if I've messed something up, the Holy Spirit and my accountability can correct me. You making a YouTube video doesn't help me. But we're just to get along. I mean, we're all Christians. Uh, who's to say, who are you to say that this person is right or wrong? Well, that's not what Jude says. As a matter of fact, Jude would love to us talk about just our common walk in Christ, our common salvation. But he says in Jude 3, instead of that, though, I felt the necessity to write you appealing to you, begging you, urging you that you contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all handed down to men. And now look why he tells us why he says for certain persons have crept in unnoticed those who are long beforehand marked out for this condemnation. These ungodly men who we don't know that what God has in store for them, but they might look nice. They sound nice. They put on a nice presentation and you say, don't contend. Don't, no, let's just let, let, let God take care of them. But again, that's what the scriptures say. And if we call them out, if we point that out, well then we're to apologize, right? So we're not limited to the, to the Bible. But God expands. And that comes by taking the limits off of him and allowing him to expand upon scripture. Bring revelation upon scripture. Paul says, folks like that, he says, what I'm doing, I, can I will continue to do in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that they are in their, in their boasted mission, that they work on the same terms as we do. There are a lot of people who say that they are part of the body and are not. And what makes it evident is that they aren't doing the same work. They claim to have a greater power. They claim to have a greater authority authority to walk more in the spirit and truth be told they're lying just because they use nice biblical words they can't back them up in scriptures they'll throw a word here or a passage here or there but they don't ever put them together which again is why they don't want to ever be shown that they're wrong they'll never have they'll never come out of the shadows and have uh, a conversation they'll never come out of the shadows and prove to us that their doctrine is correct and so for them what are we supposed to do we are to continue just like paul to undermine them. They are not on the same team. I don't care that they have a, that they uh, say that they are. I don't care that their colors look similar to our colors. I don't care that their chants and their marches and their words sound like ours. Nope. It's evident by their doctrine. Right here. Somebody jump in. I said there's a pool right there. I said there's a pool right there. So Paul on his deathbed, he's getting ready to die. What does he say? Preach the word. Be ready in season. Look what he says. Look at the words he put. Now, we've already covered some of the words. We covered the word refute. We've covered the word expose. We've covered the word contend, fight, undermine. I'm sorry. We're going to actually going to cover fight in just a second. He says, but reprove. That's a word. That means they think differently than what, what should we do. We should prove them wrong or they should prove us wrong. That's what we're supposed to do. No one has it all right. And so if I'm wrong, prove it. Show me in the scriptures. But don't run and hide and then say that I'm wrong for asking you um, to make your make your doctrine known. Why do you believe this? Why are you teaching folks to go astray from the word of God? And I'm wrong. We're to apologize for that. No, we're not. He says to rebuke them, reprove, rebuke. Rebuke is not a nice word, but that means you need to set someone straight. You need to make sure that this person is admonished for the bad teaching. Exhort, encourage them along. Well, because we're not just trying to just pound someone down. We want to encourage them, lift them up. And how do we do so? With great patience and instruction. The word that's used there is the dake, which is the word to teach. So we do so with teaching. Why? Because just like today, the time has come when they will not endure sound doctrine. What is Paul's point here? He's talking about doctrine. They'll turn away from the truth. That's what's happening. And so Paul goes on to say that he has fought the good fight. Think about that. So we ought to also fight. And he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Not the not kept believing, but the faith, the doctrine. And that's his point. Paul even goes on later to name names. He says, Alexander the coppersmith, beware of him. He resisted our what? Our message. He did us much harm or did me much harm. And so we called them out. 
we make it known, not for the sake of just calling someone out. I don't think it's good for, or healthy for anyone to go looking for where someone's done wrong. That's not healthy. But there's so much out there, it kind of comes your way. And when you see it, you warn people. No one's calling us to be investigators. I'm not an investigator. I don't go looking for it. But when something comes my way, when someone says, hey, what, what about this or this teaching, or I see that it's harmful, well, then we need to make sure that other people know the truth. Do not let people run into danger. You're supposed to be a worthy watchman and to point out the evils, the wiles. Again, what does Paul say in Romans 16? He says to keep your eye on them. That is your duty to keep your eye on them to contend. Again, look at the words. Contend. Mark. Keep your eye on. Fight. Reprove. Rebuke. Expose. Undermine. All of these words that all of the teachers tell us to do. And so if we do it, are we to apologize for that? No. Who should apologize? Anyone that's teaching it or anyone that's supporting it. And so if you think that I should apologize for doing what the scriptures tell me to do, then no, you should apologize. Mm -hmm.